How's it going, everybody? Coming here, 5M Family Homestead Channel. If you're new to the channel, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Got something I want to talk to y'all about. We stumbled across this yesterday, and uh, people are panic buying or stockpiling, hoarding, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, this particular item. And uh, we stumbled across it yesterday, and if y'all don't know and are wanting to buy them, you might want to get ahead of it. So we'll talk about it here in a second. All right, y'all, before we talk about uh, the panic buying, hoarding that's going on, I got a little, uh, little chore, a little errand project, and they get knocked out. Picked up two of these uh, peach trees at uh, Tractor Supply a, a while back, and I'm worried they've been here too long and dried out. I don't know, but I'm gonna plant them and water them and see. I've, I've had them for about a month now, and they haven't had any water, so just got busy and got, uh, got away from me. So I'm gonna plant them real quick, So and then we'll talk. Some of y'all get frustrated. We had a video that did really well here recently and I kind of gave y'all a teaser and then I went and did some chores and everybody, there's a lot of comments like, we don't want to see you feeding your stupid animals. Just get to the point, get to the point. Uh, this is a, if you don't know, this is a vlog channel. So we vlog our, what we do in our homestead and what's going on in our, um, our side business and stuff like that. So uh, sometimes we show that stuff and we talk about other topics and, and whatnot. So. Uh, but we're going to talk about this, but first let's go plant some peach trees. So another one of the reasons I haven't planted these trees is I could not, uh, there's times where I had the time to do it, but I couldn't figure out where I wanted to put them at. Um, we live on a one acre uh, piece of property and space is, um, I mean, it's kind of, it's closing in on us and we're running out of space. So I don't want to put them somewhere where they're going to be in the way or where we may potentially utilize that space for another, you know, something different. Uh, and then have to pull them out or whatever. So, um, but then today it hit me. We have across from our house, um, this is a private road right here um, that goes down into two other houses. Um, and alongside this whole private road, there's a little ditch that's cut out. And I've never seen it have much water in it. Um, it doesn't really catch much of, from anywhere. Um, it kind of goes and goes back over the hill that way. So a lot of the water goes that direction and then pretty much from that other driveway up here down to here is all that the water that comes down through here. So I'm not going to plant these trees in the middle of the swell or the ditch, um, but it definitely um, towards the property line right here, it kind of goes up hill a little bit and I'm thinking I'm going to plant them right through here. This is a piece of our property that we own this portion over here and we'll never, <clears throat> um, be able to do anything with it here just because of this ditch alongside the road here. So I'm thinking we're gonna plant these two peach trees like right here. Um, I read uh, 15 to 20 foot apart is what we're supposed to plant them. So I'm thinking about planting a couple of those here and then we may get some more um, trees to plant, like fruit bearing trees to plant down through here. I think we could plant several to the that corner brace up there is where our property line ends. So across over there. I think we could plant quite a few between here and there and utilize the space. So, but I think I'm going to plant them probably about where that, as far as off of the fence, I'm going to plant them about where that shovel is, maybe a little bit closer to the fence, something like that. Then when they fill out, we'll still have room to get all the way, you know, we'll be able to get all the way around most of them. Um, and if we had to get on those of the fence, we, we could, we know the neighbor. Um, but question, so what, uh, what are some more uh, fruit bearing trees that we should plant here in North Texas? Uh, the a rent house we used to have, they had, um, they were called Texas date trees or jujube trees. And those are a really cool fruit. Um, and the kids liked them. They kind of taste like an apple, I guess, maybe. Um, I've been looking to get some seedlings of the, that particular tree and I cannot find them. Um, but I may have to end up ordering them or something, but I like to eat a couple of those and then, uh, I don't know, apples, uh, pear tree. What else? What do y'all think? Y'all comment below. I've read that I'm no expert, but I've read you're supposed to uh, plant at least two so they can germinate each other or something like that. Y'all comment below. I'm not an expert. Tell me what, how, how that works. So, all right, we're gonna get these in the ground real quick.
all right y'all got them planted they look good if you get lined up right they they're gonna line up with the fence pretty good and like said we're gonna get some more soon and keep on going down that way all right y'all went inside to get a drink real quick and uh shannon was making fun of me for how i was measuring out uh the trees over there first i was using like the shovel and using i was doing like one whole shovel and then a half and then i was looking at it and it didn't look right something felt off to me like when like one of them looked closer than the other so i actually went in i don't know if i showed it on video but i went in and got my tape measure and then measured it off the fence and and sure enough one of them was one inch shorter than the other one so i moved it out an inch and and then i don't know if you saw in the video but the first hole i started after thinking about it I wouldn't have had enough room to get my lawnmower through there and I didn't want to we need all that extra space between the tree and the fence so I went ahead and moved it out a little bit farther I think they're 64 inches exactly off the fence line so that gives me my lawnmower is a 48 inch lawnmower I think so that gives me you know more than enough room uh, to make it between the tree and the fence I got a little rope on my little chute that shoots the grass out and you pick it up and go right through there so so I'm not trying to scare anybody or panic anybody. This is more just a public service announcement to anybody who may want to know. We raised, we raised a few uh, batches of meat chickens and last year the uh, fowlers came over and helped us um, process the ones we grew last year and uh, we got really excited about it and learned more about it and we decided this year we're going to uh, grow even more. So we were going to order 30 to 35 uh, meat chickens. Last year we did the Rudd Rangers and we ordered them um, later than this time right now. We ordered them a few weeks later than this time right now. And today is March 2nd. Um, I think we ordered them mid to end of March. Um, so we went online yesterday and we, we, Shannon and I were just talking about it, kind of thinking about it. And uh, while we were doing it, we were trying to figure out who, uh, what company we bought the meat chickens from. Uh, we, fi we figured it out, it was Hoover Hatchery. We went online, looked on Hoover Hatchery. They have no Rudd Rangers or any kind of uh, free ranging type uh, chicken that we could find, or very few that we could find, um, that were available to be mailed to us until May. Um, so then we went, I think we went to McMurray Hatchery, same thing, uh, and then we hit a couple of the other hatcheries, same thing. Um, so, uh, what we ended up doing, I mean, I have some reasons why I think that that is why that's happening. We'll talk about that in a minute, but what we ended up doing is um, we did some research and found out of the, the few choices that they did have available, we found what we thought would fit best for us. And we ordered, I think 30 of those chickens. And then I can't remember what the name of them are. It's not a name I'm super familiar with. Uh, Shannon would remember, but I'll, I'll tell you all here in a minute. But uh, we ordered, I think, 30 of those and then five or six um, of another kind of laying hen that we're going to try and we're going to just raise those uh, the laying hens with the meat chickens until the meat chickens are ready to be butchered and then we'll let them out with the, um, the rest of our flock. So, like I said, if you guys are wanting to raise meat chickens, you know, I'm not trying to panic or anything like that, anybody, but um, you might want to try to go look now and see if you can get some because the problem with for us with getting them in May, um, that may be okay in other parts of the country. If we get them in May, we're going to be raising them right through the heat of the summer. And if we have a bad summer, even if we have a normal summer, we could definitely lose some uh, uh, some chickens to heat. We we did that last year, and we only raised them into like through June, the end of June. Um, uh, you know, you could lose them to heat, and and just you know they don't they don't they just don't do as well in the heat. Uh, that, that's our big problem. Is you know May going? It'll be August, September before we butcher them and just there's just too many problems with that heat and having to keep them cool and putting tarps up and it's a lot of work we we lived through that last year like i said we didn't even really get into summer last year with them so uh you know if you're in another part of the country maybe uh, maybe getting them in may is not a big deal for y'all it's a big deal for us so if you live in the south and you don't don't want to be raising uh your meat chickens through the heat of the summer you should probably go check out um your you know any of the online hatcheries and uh see what they have available you may have to think outside the box and do some research like we did um but but hopefully y'all can still find some but the 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 rud rangers and red rangers and all those types that are the most common free ranging type which is what we like um are not available uh we did buy a free range hold on let me go inside and ask you know what the name it is i asked her like three times today and i still can't remember hold on all right i'm back 
So I got it wrote down this time, so I don't forget. So we ordered ginger broilers. Uh, those are new to us. Um, they're supposed to be built kind of like a Cornish cross, uh, but they don't have the issues of the Cornish cross. Uh, those were the first type of meat chickens we raised, and we probably won't raise them anymore. They're nasty, and they're definitely like what the production uh, meat, you know, chicken processing places use. And they grow so fast that they can like they can eat themselves to death, and they get so big that they can't walk, and their feet swell up, and they'll. It's just they're not they're not for us. Um, those Rudd Rangers were really nice, and um, these uh, ginger broilers, from what we're hearing, is supposed to be, you know, you can free range them. Uh, you can also raise them, you know, in a tractor. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a combination of that with them. Um, but that's what we ordered. Y'all, y'all may check into them. We did not look for Cornish crosses. They may be available. If that's what if you want to go that route. Again, we're not going to. Um, but why? Why is you know last year? We started looking this this time, maybe even earlier for meat chicks, and then kind of made our decision, like I said, admitted in mid to end of March, and there was no problem getting them sent, you know, like the next week. I don't know if this whole, um, you know, egg production uh, conspiracy thing has anything to do with it. Uh, why they're so far out? Um, if if the chickens aren't laying eggs enough. Um, I don't know if it's uh, people are rushing to buy meat chickens for, you know, just the state that our our economy and our government and our country is in just to prepare. I don't know if there's more people getting into homesteading and, and raising their own food. I don't know. I really don't know what um, could be causing it. It could be a, a combination of things. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe for whatever reason, if you go back in there in a week or two, Maybe they'll have them available sooner and they're just not available right now. I don't know. But we didn't want to take a chance on not getting anything, so we went ahead and ordered these. Uh, Y'all check them out, Ginger Broilers. They're, they're a reddish color. Um, look to be pretty hardy. Um, so we're hopeful that they'll work out for us. Uh, we also ordered Blue Andalusians for uh, our to add to our laying hens. I think we ordered five of those. And uh, like I said, we're just gonna raise them up with the meat chickens. and. Uh, See how that goes. So, uh, y'all comment below. Why do you think uh, there's a shortage on chickens right now, on meat chickens? Uh, comment below, let us know. Uh, speaking of meat chickens, tonight, Shana's gonna cook um, one of our meat chickens that we raised last year, one of the, the Rudd Rangers. And uh, she's gonna do it in a way that the Fowlers uh, told us to try. It's gonna be really exciting. Um, I mean, I'm super excited about it. Uh, so, y'all stay tuned and she'll show y'all how she does that. We eat the chicken in a tornado. Hopefully not. There's some bad storms out west, west of us heading our way. They're like looking like they're coming right towards us. So kind of early. It's already there. spawned a tornado warning. The storm and it's intensifying. So we maybe eating our chicken in the, <laughs> the storm, storm shelter. Um, so I'm we're we gotta prepare the chicken. I told you earlier we're gonna cook the chicken in a new way. So we're gonna do it in Shanna's what do you call that thing? Ninja Foodie Grill XL. That's what I have. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It's over there. It sounds like a spaceship taking off. It's preheating, that's why. Oh, I guess I should say that. So I turned it on, I did the roast, hit the roast, and then it's right now it doesn't show it, but it will. I have it set at 360 degrees for one hour, and then it, when I shut it, it preheats. So it's done preheating and it's ready to have the food added to it. The Fowlers told us about this. The yeah. only way that we've ever cooked whole chicken is in a crock pot and it's not that good. Yeah. And on a smoker. But and during the week we don't usually fire up the smoker yeah. for things like that. Smoking chicken or ribs or anything. Well this is going to be a lot faster. And then last night, the night before we were, I was stressing because I didn't think we had a whole lot of meat left. And we were going through it and then the chicken and then it dawned on me. <laughs> Tanya and Mike were like, for lunch sometimes they'll fire up their ninja and throw a whole chicken in there so do we have a lot of meat left no yes he's looking at me behind the camera <laughs> yeah she was worried we didn't have a lot of meat left I was, like we, there, we could not possibly fit like even part of a pig in there right now we've got to eat all that food down uh so we're trying to we just need to i mean not that we haven't already but we're going to continue to you know buy very little food from the grocery store. I just don't, I would just rather not eat it and have it there forever. So, the next part 
I have to prepare the chicken. Okay? Shanna's immature about this and <laughs> she can't handle what what you call doing to this chicken. What do no, you call it? No, hold on. <laughs> First of all, I don't like touching chicken anyways. Right. I have been... That's not the question. It's not, and I'm not saying it. What are we doing to the chicken? You're going to cut it open and lay it open. <laughs> it's called spatchcocking. You can cut the chicken's back. Look at her. Look at her. <laughs> look, at her. <laughs> look at her. Look how immature she is. She can't even have a real conversation about spatchcocking the chicken. We all can have conversations. So, so all you gotta do is you just cut the backbone out and you open it up and you can lay it. Look at her. Okay, I just, I mean, it just, it's a very appropriate thing. So I'll show y'all how to do it. It's not hard at all. I didn't say it was easy. I mean, I never said it was the, how easy or hard it was. What I don't like is the name. You told me. That's cooking. <laughs> not hard. Well, and I don't like, I don't like touching chicken. So yeah. I make Tobin do it. And then he just likes saying the word like a little 13 year old giggly boy. Are you rude? Ignore the dishes in the sink. The kids came home and made their- There's like four dishes. No, I know. I'm not gonna ignore those. When I watch the video, I'm gonna point them out. I'm gonna be like, why is there dishes Ma in the Molly, get your why friend under control. Why is our daughter who doesn't ever wanna be on camera talking in the background? So, I, I will say, this has already been brine. Uh, the Fowlers suggested that to us after we processed them to soak it in a brine for, it was like a day and a half, and then we uh, sealed them up. So it's already brined, and the flavor in that's gonna be great alone. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and add some seasoning on the top. I don't think the meat inside needs to be seasoned or anything. But this is one of the hens that we raised. So all you need is like size. kitchen shears and a knife. Um, preferably both of them can, need to be cheap and easy to throw away or very expensive because, and very durable because. We paid break. 99 cents for these. Yep. And we buy some every once a week, month or so. Yeah. Okay, we just had an inappropriate joke happen and I had to cut the camera off for a minute. So that's the that's the backbone, yes. right? Cutting the backbone out. Cut out. <laughs> that's just the backbone. Cut out. You can see oh, the leaves sure. from when we The bay leaves. When we grind it. Alright, are we ready to put it in the thing? No, turn it over because I want to um I want to season it we'll with season like season this salt. Part. Okay. It's a lot of seasoned salt. Okay, like I said, it doesn't need a whole lot because it's the brine is pretty salty. We used how much a box of kosher salt or something like that when we made the brine. Disclaimer: I have never done this before. Never made one in the Ninja. I've done a little bit of research. So what I'm going to do and what I've understood is you're going to put it in breast side down. So that yes. would be just like this, right? No, this is the breast side. Okay, breast side so down for 30 minutes and then you go in and you flip it. That's okay. what I understand it. So we're gonna go ahead and open this and put it in there. No! Oh my gosh, it turned off. Hold on. 360. I didn't know it turned off like that. The good thing it has already be preheated so it doesn't matter. Okay, so now All right, so now we're gonna put it in. It's hot, so be careful. Got it. I feel perfect. I, I thought it was gonna be short on room. So there goes the countdown. In 30 minutes, we're gonna come back in and we're going to flip it over. And that way it gets it on both sides. And at the 30 minute mark, we're gonna put an internal temperature in there that we have. And that way we can watch it because we want it to get to 195 degrees. Right? Isn't that what chicken is? No. <laughs> That's not right. I'm not usually allowed. No, it's 160. Oh. I'm not allowed to cook things like chicken or anything because I overcook them because I'm paranoid. 
Anyways, we're gonna put an internal th thermometer in and when it hits one, I'm gonna say it's 165 uh, at the breast, it'll be done. So we'll show you in 30 minutes. How else would you do it? Okay, so the cool thing about it is it at the 30 minute mark told it to me to flip. We weren't quite ready, so, but we're ready now. So we're gonna flip it. It looks roasted, doesn't it? Well, maybe I should have. And go ahead and put the thermometer in. Yeah, you're gonna have to. Uh... It's showing it's done. That's not right, though. It's not 189 right now. There's no way. It's been cooking for 30 minutes. Okay, that's more feasible, but now if you put it right there... It's coming out the other side. I don't know where else to put it. Well, then let's just cook it for the additional 30 minutes. And because everyone says an hour that, that, yeah, you're right, it is coming out. I just saw it. Okay. We'll it just wait. Cooking. I guarantee it's going to be done in 31 minutes. Yeah. The is going now. Okay. So it's going for 30 minutes minus the meat probe because the chicken is so small, it was coming out the other side. How'd you not burn your hands? That everyone's going to ask. Oh my goodness. Ta da! That shocked me so much. Perfect timing in Texas. We've got eight seconds left. <laughs> and it is hailing like crazy outside. Can y'all hear it? Your car's out there! We have a trailer full of lumber. Yeah. And my car is not into the carport and it's out and it's hailing like crazy right now. So. Near the yeah. All right. Dinner ready either way. Is it off? No. I was gonna do it. Even if it is right here. We can. It's gotta be done. That was good. Yeah. You're gonna have to ignore the sounds outside. We went ahead and broke it open and we're gonna let it rest for a few minutes, but I'm scared it's, cool. it's gonna I'm scared it's gonna overcook. I think we may have went too long with it. But you will be convinced now that it's cooked all of it. It looks good though, doesn't it? Yeah. It smells good. I'm so happy about this. Now that we have the ways to, you know, know how to cook a whole chicken this quick. It doesn't. Turn down the thing. Well, I mean, it's just trying to give them an idea. Fairly widespread power outages as this line no, continues to move east. The only good news I can tell you is that we're not seeing any large hail embedded within the line, and at least for the present time, there's no significant rotation. Allie? We are getting reports of significant shingle damage, power flashing. So, uh, my music teacher taught me today, uh, uh, they were teaching us because of. Uh, or tornado watch was still there, and they taught. She taught us. Um, uh, for if something hits your brain, you didn't like that. <laughs> Nothing's getting it to my head. And also, I have like my Lego uh, Lego builds, blankets, books, my, um, and I have two of my stuff in here. In your backpack. Uh -huh. You're prepared. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're done making it. Tobin's made his plate. And that's about all we have left of it. Everybody was very excited and picking on it, picking at it while we were getting plates. So what would we do different? 
we would do it less time. Yeah. Flip it probably at 20 minutes. 20 minutes one side, flip it, and then do 20 minutes on the other, and then yeah, check it. If you more. have a smaller bird, if you have a bigger bird, then of course you would want to add more time to it. But I think it's a win, and I'm very excited because everyone is eating it. So that's right. I mean, we raise that bird here ourselves, yeah. so and it make, gives me like that's going to be a like a good way to utilize. Mm -hmm. We're going to have 30 of them in the freezer this summer, and that will be that's super easy. Especially I mean, not heating up the kitchen or putting out the smoker yeah, in the like during tax army season, the kids mm -hmm. can even you know prep it all and make it. And I mean, it's doing that to make it. We could one day cook a couple of them and quarter them up and yeah. put them in baggies to cook for you know warm up for soups or, or whatever like our meal prep or whatever yeah. yeah okay well that's it we're gonna go and the worst of the storm i think is past us of course we're not gonna be able to go outside and see anything of damage or anything until later because it is still pouring down rain but i think the worst is past us so we're gonna eat dinner we'll see you guys later thanks for the support thanks for watching we'll see you again what am i i'm doing well so so y'all comment below uh are, are y'all ordering chickens this year meat chickens um and let us know what you're seeing um yeah because i don't think he he showed me a little bit of his video that he did earlier but he didn't even realize a lot of the hatcheries were august before yeah, chickens may i'll, I'll say in may but yeah yeah august no some of them were august I was, um i was texting mike <clears throat> fowler today and he was saying they were trying to order some uh, laying hens a while back, and they were they saw that they were all the way out to yep. May or June, I think. So, it's you know, I think it's a, a combination of things. I think it has everything to do with the. Um, the I don't want to say thing. the scare tactic, but yeah. the things with the the egg shortage and the yeah. feed and everything and people else. People are just buying yes. them, panic buying them. I think them so. And, yeah. I think that's what it is because yeah. we've never, like he said, we've never in the past had any trouble just getting online, ordering. Um, 20, 25, and then shipping the next week. I, we've yeah. never had that issue before, and yeah. now we do. So, well, comment below what do y'all think? What's causing it? Okay, really, that's it. Yep, that's all we got. We're going to eat. Bye.